Hi, everyone, and welcome to this session of our algorithms class. Today, we're going to talk about a practical but often overlooked data structure, the union fine data structure, also known as the disjoint set union, or DSU for short. The name might sound a little complicated, but this structure actually plays a critical role in many important algorithms. For example, it helps us determine if a graph has a cycle, figure out which nodes are connected in a network, and, in the next video, we'll see how it's used in Kruskal's algorithm to build a minimum spanning tree. So, what exactly is a union find? Simply put, it's a data structure designed to efficiently manage disjoint sets. It allows us to quickly determine whether two elements are in the same set and to merge two sets when needed. The union find structure mainly supports three fundamental operations. The first operation, make set, creates a separate group for each element, initially treating each element as its own parent. The second operation, find, locates the representative, or simply the root of the group that a given element belongs to. This root serves as the identity of the group. The third operation, union, merges two distinct groups into one, provided they are not already part of the same group. To make it easier to understand, let's use a real-world analogy, finding your boss in a company. Imagine that everyone in the company reports to a direct manager. Makeset is like a new employee joining the company. At first, they report to themselves. They are their own boss. Find is like an employee trying to figure out who the highest level boss is in their chain of command. They keep following their direct managers upward until they reach someone who reports only to themselves. That person is the root node, representing the entire team or department. If two employees trace their way up and discover they have the same top boss, it means they belong to the same department. If not, they belong to different departments. And union? That's like a company reorganization, where two departments merge, and one of the existing top bosses becomes the new overall boss. From that point on, everyone from both departments will eventually report to this new boss. While we usually imagine the union fine structure visually as a tree, in actual programming, it's typically implemented using an array. In this array, each index represents an element, and the value at that index represents its parent. For example, if parent 4 equals 3, it means that element 4's parent is element 3. By following parent links upward step by step, we eventually reach an element that is its own parent. This element is called the root, and it uniquely represents its group. Visually, this forms a forest where each tree is rooted at a representative element. Every node either directly or indirectly points to its root, which is why this structure is often referred to as a rooted tree. Using an array to implement union find is simple, extremely fast, and highly memory efficient. And when we add optimizations like path compression and union by rank, which we'll cover very soon, both the find and union operations can be made nearly constant time. This makes union find incredibly efficient and powerful in practice. Some of you might be wondering, what if the elements aren't integers? What if they're strings? Great question. It's actually no problem at all. We can simply use a hash map to assign each string a unique number, map them to array indices, and then apply the union find structure just like before. Sounds a bit abstract? No worries. Let's walk through a concrete example step by step, using both tree diagrams and arrays to see exactly how the basic operations work. We'll start with eight elements, numbered from 0 to 7, and watch how the union find structure builds and evolves. First, we perform the make set operation. We initialize the eight elements, placing each one into its own individual group. At this point, every element is its own root meaning each element's parent is itself. You can picture this as eight small trees, each with just a single node. Next, let's demonstrate the union operation, merging two groups together. First, we perform union, 0, 1. This means we're merging the groups that contain 0 and 1. Let's say we choose 0 to be the new root. To do that, we set parent 1 equals 0. Now, nodes 0 and 1 are in the same group. They're part of the same tree. Next, we perform union, 2, 3. Similarly, we choose 2 as the new root, so we set parent, 3, equals 2. 
Next, we perform union, zero, two, meaning we merge the two small trees we just built. We choose zero as the root and set parent, two equals zero. Now, zero becomes the representative of the entire group and nodes one, two, and three all either directly or indirectly point to zero. At this point, if we call find three, the system first checks that three's parent is two, then checks that two's parent is zero. Since zero's parent is itself, we return zero. In other words, the representative of the group containing three is zero. Let's do a few more unions. We perform union four, five, then union six, seven, and then union four, six. This connects elements four, five, six, and seven into one group. Finally, we perform union zero, four, merging the tree rooted at four into the tree rooted at zero. At this point, all the elements are connected under one big tree with zero as the root. At this point, if we call find seven, the system will trace seven's parent to six, six's parent to four, four's parent to zero, and since zero's parent is itself, it returns zero, meaning that the representative of seven's group is zero. Through this example, you can see that each time we perform a union, we're essentially creating manager-employee relationships between elements. And every time we perform a find, we trace upward through those relationships until we reach the top boss, the root of the group. Here's a basic implementation of union find in Python, which I'll call version 1.0. First, the init method takes a parameter n, which represents the number of elements. We create an array called parent of size n. At the beginning, each element is its own parent, meaning parent i equals i. This matches the makeset operation we just talked about. Next is the find method. We use it to find the representative, or root, of the set that an element belongs to. We keep checking the parent of the current element until we find one whose parent is itself. That's when we found the root. Now let's look at the union method. The goal here is to merge the sets that contain elements x and y. First, we find the root of each element. If the two roots are different, we simply make one root point to the other. In this case, we make root y point to root x, meaning the two sets are now merged into one. This version of union find is very simple and great for beginners to understand the basic idea. But it does have a problem. As more and more sets get merged, the trees can become deeper and deeper, and the find operation could get slower over time. Let's go back to the earlier example. Imagine we perform a series of basic union operations. First, union, 0, 1, then union, 1, 2, then union, 2, 3, and so on, all the way up to union, 6, 7. What happens is that the tree starts to stretch out into a long chain. So when we call find, 7, we have to walk up the chain one step at a time, from seven to six, six to five, and so on, until we finally reach the root. In this worst case scenario, the time complexity of find becomes O n, which is linear. To avoid this problem, we want to keep the trees as short as possible during union operations. The basic idea is, whenever we merge two sets, we attach the smaller tree under the taller one. This helps keep the overall height low and makes find operations much faster. But how do we decide which tree is smaller? Well, there are two common strategies. One way is to track the height of each tree. We call this the rank and use it to guide the merge. This approach is known as union by rank. The other way is to track the size of each tree, meaning the number of elements it contains, and merge based on size. This is called union by size. For example, let's say we have two subtrees. If we're using union by rank and the tree rooted at zero has a height of two, while the tree rooted at four has a height of one, we make the shorter tree, the one rooted at four, point to the taller one, rooted at zero. On the other hand, if we're using union by size and the tree rooted at four has five elements, while the one rooted at zero only has four, we do the opposite. We attach the smaller tree, rooted at zero, to the bigger one, rooted at four. Either way, the goal is the same, keep the trees flat, and keep find operations fast. 
Here's version 2.0 of UnionFind, where we've added the Union by Rank optimization. Compared to version 1.0, we now maintain an additional array called Rank, which tracks the height of each tree. If you're interested in the details, feel free to pause the video here and take a closer look at how the Union function implements this Union by Rank approach. Next is version 2.1, where we switch to the Union by Size optimization. Compared to version 2.0, instead of tracking the height with a rank array, we now track the number of elements in each tree using a size array. If you're interested, feel free to pause the video and take a closer look at how the union function merges sets based on size. Now, you might be wondering, is version 2.0 or 2.1 the most efficient union find implementation? Well, not quite yet. There's one more powerful optimization called path compression. Path compression can make the find operation extremely fast, almost constant time. So, what exactly is path compression? Let's quickly review how the find operation works. In the basic version, when you search for the root of a node, you follow the parent link step by step until you reach the root. But if the tree is deep, this can take a lot of steps. Path compression improves this process by flattening the tree as you search. While moving up toward the root, you make each node you pass point directly to the root. Afterward, the path from any node to the root becomes much shorter. Here's version 3.0 of Union Find, where we add path compression on top of Union by rank. The main change is in the find method. Instead of using a simple loop to climb up the tree, we rewrite the find function recursively. If a node is not its own parent, we recursively call find on its parent. Once we find the root, we immediately update the current node to point directly to that root. The benefit of this optimization is significant. Every time we call find, we not only find the root, but also flatten the path along the way. As a result, any future find operations on those nodes will be much faster, almost instant. Finally, let's summarize the performance of this final version. By combining union by rank and path compression, we achieve an extremely efficient data structure. In the worst case, the time complexity of each find or union operation is not exactly constant, but it's very close to it. More precisely, the time complexity is described using something called the inverse Ackermann function, often denoted as alpha of n. You might not have heard of it, but the key takeaway is this. For any practical size of data, alpha of n is at most 4 or 5. So, for all intents and purposes, we can treat these operations as nearly constant time. To wrap up, Union Find version 3.0 is not only close to optimal from a theoretical standpoint, but it's also highly efficient in real-world applications. It's an incredibly useful tool for handling dynamic connectivity problems and definitely a data structure worth mastering.